She started asking me about counseling and therapy. I reiterated that our relationship was over. I'd be leaving. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Ara Zone Stories. Today we have a story where this woman had an one night stand but her husband found out it was multiple times. Let's see what happened afterwards. This is horrible. I'm furious right now. But I'm also depressed. I know what I have to do. It's just ending me that I have to do it. It's fresh and it hurts a lot. My wife didn't come home last night. She went out with a couple of girlfriends, which is pretty normal for her. She's normally back around 2 a.m. on these nights, so I waited up. Around 2.30 a.m., I called to check in. She answered, and I could hear people in the background. She told me they went to a party, but were leaving in a couple of minutes. She wasn't home by 3 a.m., so I texted. It delivered, but no reply. Around 4 a.m. I called again. It rang a couple of times before she sent me to voicemail. My wife finally came stumbling through the door at 6.47 a.m. this morning. I know the exact time because I was worried. She was wearing a dress she didn't leave the house in. With mesh leggings I've never seen either. The leggings had clearly been torn, and her makeup was smudged. My heart sank when I saw her. My immediate worry was that she had been assaulted. She only shook her head no when I asked her that. I asked her what she had been doing then. She only said that I knew what she had been doing, and that kind of confirmed what the voice in the back of my head had been screaming since she walked in. My wife cheated on me last night. I asked her who it was, she shrugged almost casually, and said it was somebody they met at the club. She went back to his house and hooked up with him, then Hubert home. She then said she didn't want to fight and just wanted to sleep. So that's what she did. She's still asleep now and didn't even take a shower before passing out. Suffice to say our relationship is over. We don't have any kids and we rent so it shouldn't be an extremely complicated process. I keep trying to reason myself out of it, pretending there might be something to salvage here. I've always maintained that cheating would be a red line for me though. I think I need to stick to that now. Alright, things have happened. I am no longer at home, I left. I wasn't able to get the day off work today though, so I'm writing this on my lunch now. It's been a struggle keeping myself together today, honestly. I've had to sneak off to the bathroom twice to cry. I'll post something more detailed later on, because there's a lot. I'm exhausted. I've only slept about 4 hours total since this all happened. My heart just isn't in that sort of thing right now. Me again, folks. I'm sorry I didn't get around to this sooner. I wasn't able to get the day off work yesterday, because my boss kind of worst. I was a complete mess at work yesterday though, so I was allowed to take the rest of the week as vacation, thankfully. I think I went through all of the stages of grief while my soon-to-be ex was sleeping. I wasn't expecting my post to get any attention at all. I just figured I needed to try to talk to someone about it, because I was not in a good headspace. I made the post in the morning, and by noon she was still conked out in the bedroom. I had processed things a bit more, and I had a rough plan in my head that I was starting to set in motion. I made a short list of questions I wanted answers to, gathered up all my important documents, laptop, etc. Then I went into the bedroom and started packing myself a suitcase. I know a lot of folks wanted me to kick her out. I did consider it, but honestly I'm not overly attached to this place. We just rent, and I'm in a lucky enough situation to be able to say that paying half the rent for a few months isn't going to financially end me. It'll sting a little bit, I won't lie. But I'll make it, and I feel like being around this place is only going to remind me of her anyway. I need to be looking forward, not back. She ended up waking up about halfway through me packing my suitcase. There was momentary confusion, as she looked around the room then she just started bawling. Maybe this is awful of me, but I didn't bother comforting her. I told her I had the screenshots of her Uber and text messages from her phone, and that plus her confirmation was enough that things between us were completely done. She didn't answer me and just cried louder. I debated trying to continue the conversation, but I decided to just pack the rest of my suitcase and head back out to the living room until she came out. When she finally left the bedroom, she sat next to me on the couch and asked me if we could talk things through. I told her as calmly as possible that wasn't how things were going to work. I was going to ask questions, I wanted honest answers. She told me she'd be honest, so I proceeded. My voice was shaking the entire time. It was taking me everything to hold it together but I kept going. Was this the first time she had cheated? 
She started crying before she answered that, then told me, no. She had cheated on me multiple times over the course of our relationship. It was, and I'm going to use her words exactly here, just bedroom activity, a way for me to let off steam. None of it ever meant anything. I wrote a comment shortly after making my post that all the love couldn't just fade away in one swoop. Well, it can. It hit me right then that I wasn't dealing with my wife. The person I was married to literally wasn't in the room. This was someone different. She refused to tell me exactly how many times she had cheated, just more than last night. Had she used protection? No hesitation from her before she nodded her head emphatically. She seemed surprised I'd even ask that. I'm still going to get tested just to be safe. I did some research into timing, and I'm going to look after it. Were her friends also cheating on their spouses? Yes and no. I tried to get her to tell me which of her friends were cheating, so I could get in contact with their spouses. She probably should have, because her refusal led to me messaging pretty much the romantic partner of every one of her girlfriends I could find on social media. There are a couple I don't know or couldn't find, but I did my part. Why did she do it? This was the answer that gutted me the most. I'm going to use her exact words again. I need to have physical variety. I told her that it's not like our bedroom activity life is dull. She clarified, it's not the same as something new. I didn't even have a response to that one. I had expected something about me working too much or not supporting her emotionally. Nope. She just did bedroom activity with other guys because she felt like it and wanted to have some fun. When I didn't respond, she started asking me about counseling and therapy. I reiterated that our relationship was over. I'd be leaving. What she did next disgusted me. My ex actually tried to have bedroom activity with me. She put her hands on me and started trying to take off my clothes. I felt like I wanted to vomit and pushed her away after a couple of seconds. She just kept telling me that she would figure out a way to fix it, that we would work through it together. I told her that there was no way, and she started bawling again. She went to the bathroom and locked herself inside. I was just sick of everything at that point. I called her mother and told her what was going on. The full story too, the cheating, the questions I had asked, and the fact I was leaving. I've always had a good relationship with my ex's parents. They both decided to drive to town, which is about an hour for them. Once I knew someone was on the way, I just grabbed my things and left. Her waterworks in the bathroom were just annoying me, because it felt hollow to me, especially given the answers to my questions. I ended up packing another bag before I left and took all the things that I could think of that I felt sentimental attachment to, with me. I found a parking lot and sat in my car until I was able to get in contact with a buddy for a place to crash. I tried to take a nap, but I was running on way too much adrenaline. I knew when her parents had made it to the apartment, because she started calling me. When I didn't answer those, she started texting me. She had gone from sad and crying to furious. Apparently I'm a piece of thing for telling her mom everything. Whoops, I'm not sorry. I've received roughly a hundred texts from her since leaving. They range from name calling all the way to begging me to come back, to sending me pictures of the food she ate for some reason. I haven't responded to any of them. I feel like I said my piece before leaving. So that's where I'm at now. We didn't have joint finances, so that part was easy. I canceled all the subscriptions that go to my credit card just to be sure, and changed all my important passwords. I'm crashing on a friend's couch for the next bit but I've got some feelers out to some short-term rental places until I can find something more permanent. I've got feelers out for a divorce attorney too. A co-worker of mine had a recommendation, so barring something better I'll probably go with them. I also wanted to say that I was shocked how supportive everyone was and thank you for that. Truly, from the bottom of my heart, it isn't easy for me to talk about emotional things with people close to me. This was an invaluable venting place for me. Thank you all so much. He is making the right choice. If that's what she wanted from a relationship, she should have been open and honest with him from the start. She shouldn't have wasted his life like this. Honestly, it's entirely fair to tell her parents. I don't blame him. Hope he meets someone who's deserving of his time and love. She gets to cry. If I shot you, am I allowed to be upset that you're shot? Jesus, insufferable even after she crushed your heart. And like, she used a machine gun. Don't mean to laugh but she never actually loved you the way you loved her. She's the type of woman who will be hollow until death. Even if she persuades herself she won't, that's all lies too. She's so disgusting. I'm glad you realized she isn't the person you married.
If you can separate that, it's easier to cut her out while appreciating the feelings and experiences you did manage to find. Cause those are rare too, even if placebo. And sorry this siren got one over on you. I hope you can find healing and growth so that you can find a woman worthy of being your wife. They do exist, trust me. I caught my wife of 15 years cheating this past year. It was the second time she had cheated on me in five years. After the first time, we reconciled after she begged me to stay and the marriage had a two-year honeymoon phase, where it felt like we were totally in love once again. However, she went back into her pattern of leaving herself available to any guy that shows even the slightest interest in her. Her affair this year detailed her flying a man she was talking to on the internet to a conference she was attending in another state which I found out about. Immediately in the aftermath, she indicated that the affair was over and that she wanted me to stay with her. We have two children, but I was torn as it had become clear this was a pattern, a cycle that could not be broken. In the month following that D-Day, I attempted to talk to her about the affair and my frustration with the whole situation. She responded with only gaslighting and blame shifting. Still, after a month, I told her that I agreed with her, that we needed to save our marriage. She, however, responded this time with, I can't make that decision with you right now. I spiraled. How could this woman who had cheated on me, and then indicated she wanted to stay with me put me through this? Over the course of another month, I did my best to save our marriage, but she still didn't want to consider counseling or talk through our issues. It was one of the most depressive months of my entire life. I began talking with some friends and family about the situation and their response was universally. What on earth are you doing? Why are you trying to save a marriage that essentially has no hope? As I spoke with them, I noticed a shift in myself that I started to change from. I only want this woman to you can find happiness without her. From what about my kids? To your kids will do better in an environment where you are happy than one with such an imbalance between the two parents. One night, it shot through me like a lightning bolt. You need to ask for a divorce. I walked into our bedroom where she was watching TV and I said, I want a divorce. She responded with, well, if that's what you want. I do want that. I was terrified I would regret my decision in the days following and come back to her on my knees pleading to save our marriage. But I didn't. Instead, what followed was actually a very amicable and agreeable split. Funny enough, our relationship near the end of our marriage was probably one of the best points in our marriage. I think it's because I just didn't care anymore. I didn't care how she felt about me as a partner. I wasn't going to let her determine my happiness anymore. In all, I kept the house because she couldn't afford it, but she found an apartment nearby. We agreed on literally everything in our divorce so we were able to do a dissolution of our marriage, so we didn't have to do a knockdown drag out fight over every little thing. We have 50-50 custody of our children. I'll give people going through this or possibly about to go through this some advice, if you can. And you live in a state where you can do a dissolution versus a contested divorce, do it. Absolutely talk to an attorney. But there's a lot of advice on here to get down in the muck and do a knockdown, drag out. But if you can come to a satisfying agreement between the parties, you need to do it. That said, always keep an attorney in your back pocket. Don't be afraid. If you feel like your partner is being unfair or there's an issue that you can't budge on to use divorce to make sure you get what you want. But I can say, don't let the emotions of the affair feel like you need to use divorce to get revenge when you can likely come out much better on the other side if the process is amicable. I have started dating again, and I've actually met a woman that I really, really like. She is also someone who divorced due to an affair against her about six years ago. But most of all, there's no lies with her. She and I share love languages, and can be open and honest without the excuse that fed my marriage for so long. We're taking it one day at a time together, but this is the best I've felt about myself in a very, very, very long time. My kids have adjusted to the situation, and what I was terrified most about, that my kids would never adapt or feel resentful, are in fact thriving, kids are way more adaptable than we give them credit for. But I'm just happy, I'm truly happy in a way I haven't felt. I make time for myself, I'm getting to travel more, I see my friends more often than I did when I was married, I get to make decisions for myself again. I've seen a counselor just to talk about this trauma in my life, and she has made me feel better, that I wasn't crazy, that I experienced gaslighting for so long that it's remarkable I could push through it. 
It may seem like you're in depths of despair in the aftermath of an affair. Believe me, I know it. It may even seem more depressing when you have to come to terms with your marriage ending. But happiness exists on the other side. But you have to let go. You have to take your life back. And once you make that decision, you have to put that part of you in a box, take inventory, and move on. Your ex-partner is now in a relationship with her old affair partner. Who cares? That's not your life anymore. Your ex-partner is broken, likely irreparably, and they aren't going to change, and you can't let their brokenness affect your happiness anymore. They can go be broken, but not on your watch, and not in your emotions and your heart. Happiness is out there, and you may not find it immediately, but you can prune back the dead leaves, and relieve yourself of the dead weight that's dragging you down. Because happiness you might find in a broken relationship with a broken person is just dead weight, and is likely temporary, and will always keep you from achieving fulfillment. Take care of yourself, friends. Hope and happiness are out there. Congratulations on his awakening, and choosing light on the other side. Honestly not sure why he wanted to repair the marriage after she showed her true colors multiple times, but glad he grew a backbone in the end. It looks like he has begun his new adventures.